John Fung would often make the point that we're practicing not only right concentration, but also just right concentration. In other words, we have to approach this as a skill, because it is possible for the mind to get into really heavy states of concentration where everything blanks out. You have no sense of the body, nothing is going on at all. And no discernment can arise in that kind of concentration. And of course, it's very easy to get the mind into concentration that's too light. So we're approaching this as a skill. And it's in making it a skill that our discernment develops. It's the same with the middle way as a whole. It's very easy to practice in extremes. Sometimes it may be hard, but it's easy in the sense you don't have to do much thinking. But finding the point of just right requires discernment. It's going to take time. This is why evaluation is an important part of the practice. Learning how to evaluate what questions to ask yourself and how often to ask them. When you're working with the breath, you don't think about concentration, you think about the breath. Try to explore the breath. What does the breath feel like in the body right now? Try to put aside all the notions you brought to today about what the breath is doing in the body. And just notice, how does it actually feel right here and now? And try to stay on top of that right here and now. And then you can start asking yourself, does it feel good? What would feel better? And the answers are things you're going to have to come up with yourself, because nobody else can come in and look at your breath. There's no teacher wandering around the room, checking up on the results of your work, telling you you should correct this number or correct that word. You have to come up with your own solution, your, and your own way of measuring what's just right for you right now. And that requires trial and error, something a lot of us don't like. We want to have the ex everything explained right on YouTube. This is how you do it. But there are a lot of things that YouTube can't tell you. Is your breath good right now? Is this just right? Well, you sit with it for a while, and then notice the results. Does it feel good? Does it feel right? Does your body feel depleted of energy? Does it feel wired? And then make adjustments. And this way you begin to develop your own discernment as to what's actually working for you. What needs to be changed? What doesn't need to be changed? And how to fine-tune the changes. The sense of just right is an important part of discernment. There's a sutta where the Buddha talks about the different aspects of discernment. Having a sense of the Dharma is the part that can be taught in words. What is the Dharma? What did the Buddha teach? And everything else is a matter of using your powers of discernment to figure out what's just right. Having a sense of the meaning of the Dharma. And that means not just the translating the words into other words. The word meaning, atta, A-T-T-H-A, also means purpose and benefit. You really understand the Dharma only when you've actually benefited from it and you've actually seen what its purpose is. That's something that has to come with practice. Having a sense of yourself, having a sense of what's just right, having a sense of the right time and place for things. People can provide questions for you to ask yourself, but the answers you come up with and your ability to adjust the questions so they're just right for you, that requires your own discernment. It takes time, takes effort. Keep coming back, coming back, coming back. But it's time well spent, because your discernment does grow. When they talk about developing discernment in the practice, it's not simply verifying what the Buddha said or borrowing his discernment. You borrow it to begin with, but you try to develop your own. 
because it will be your discernment that will see. So as you're trying to get the mind to settle down, the big questions are, what's getting in the way of it settling down? What's disturbing it right now? And what can you do to get past the disturbance? And then you can ask yourself, does it, the body feel too heavy? Does it feel too light? Sometimes you can actually focus on the lightness of the body. Cast around in the body and see if you can find any sensations that feel light and focus on them. See if that lightens things when they're too heavy, or if you're feeling giddy or lightheaded. Where in the body is the sensation of solidity, weight? Focus in on that. One of the reasons we have instructions, so you have an idea of how to develop your discernment, is they give you ideas of what to look for, questions to ask. And also when to ask which questions. If you find that your concentration is good, okay, then you can start asking the questions of discernment. How do I understand how I'm fabricating this state here right now? And am I fabricating it well? What would be a better fabrication? And to what extent can I trust these fabrications? And when you're trying to get the mind to settle down, those are not the questions you're asking. It's what can I do to make it still? Once it's still, how do I maintain it, keep it still? This is why the Buddha listed only some of his teachings as categorical, in other words, true across the board. In fact, there are only two sets in the whole canon that he mentions, where he describes as categorical. One is the teaching that unskillful qualities should be abandoned and skillful ones should be developed. Another is the Four Noble Truths. As for other teachings, they have their time and their place. For example, when you're working on concentration, the questions of things being inconstant, stressful, not self, don't apply that to the concentration. Apply it to the things that would pull you away. Because you're trying to make the concentration constant, easeful, and under your control. So you have to learn how to use these teachings at the right time, at the right place. And as far as control goes, that comes from not trying to impose preconceived notions on things, but trying to notice, how do I get the mind to settle down? Can I do it again? Can I do it again? Looking for the causes, the things that attract the mind, and then can maintain it. That's a control, not of a control freak, but of someone who's skilled. And as you focus on the breath this way, the concentration develops on its own, whether you're having to think about this jhana or concentration or other abstractions. Focus on getting really to know the breath. And of course, in doing that, then you can't help but get to know the mind. And that's for the long arc of your practice. It's good every now and then to stop and take note, but you don't want to be evaluating things too frequently, because as the Buddha said, so many times the changes that are going to come in the course of the practice are extremely gradual. You can't really measure them. And John Lee's images of watching a plant grow, we know it's growing, but can you measure it from day to day to day? Or from minute to minute, how much it's growing? Well, no. But you come back days later and you say, oh, it has grown. The Buddhist image is of a, a hammer whose handle wears down over time. But you can't measure each day how much it's worn down. But you know it's getting worn. The same way the practice will develop. But if you measure it too often, say, I'm not getting where I want, maybe a question of you haven't given it enough time. So 
can get back to the breath, get back to the breath. And every month or so, you can ask yourself, how, thing, how are things going? And that way you learn to be judicious in how you use your powers of judgment. It helps if you've developed a manual skill, because then you can take that skill as a as a guide in how you balance the desire for what you want, with the knowledge that you have to focus on the causes. And you can't let your desire get stale, but at the same time you can't let it get so rampant that it gets in the way of everything else. So think about the skills you developed and how you develop them. And try to use the same approach to the meditation. And over time your discernment will develop. Patience is an important quality here. You have to keep doing this over and over and over again. And every now and then something will occur to you, like a little light bulb will go off. You say, oh, something I've been doing all along and I haven't noticed it, and I suddenly noticed it now. Well, you wouldn't have noticed it if you hadn't been doing it again and again and again. And John Lee's image for this is of walking along a path every day. Because you walk on it every day, you notice the little things that have changed from day to day. And there may be times when you've walked past something many, many times and you haven't noticed it, all of a sudden there it is. Everything you need to find is right here. It's where the body and the mind meet at the breath. That's where the Buddha gained awakening. So what's the difference between his breath and our breath? Nothing. The difference is in the discernment. His was developed. Ours is still developing. But take heart that this is in the right direction. And it is necessary to have a good teacher. As I was, uh, I was saying this afternoon, when you're playing the piano, for instance, you've heard great performances. You know what they sound like. And you compare yours to theirs. But with nirvana, if you haven't seen it, there's no way you can compare where you are with where that's going to be. This is why the Buddha said it's only at stream entry that a person becomes independent in the Dharma. They've seen where it's, go where it's going. That puts their powers of judgment on a firm basis. Up to that point, it's, it's still going to be wobbly. So try to find somebody you can trust. and get a sense of how they ask questions and how they judge things, and try it on for size. It's through being willing to try, even when you're not sure, that gives you some hope in the practice. The people who want everything all laid out for them are never going to develop the discernment they need. Or the ingenuity that makes the Dharma their own. <laughs>